Hello everyone. We are going to discuss transplant rejection. Transplant rejection is a major barrier to transplantation in which the patient's immune system recognizes the graft as foreign and attacks it. Rejection is a complex process in which both cell-mediated immunity and circulating antibodies play a role. So the mechanism of recognition and rejection of allograft, it has two pathways, direct pathway or indirect pathway. Indirect pathway, the donor class 1 and class 2 MHC antigens on antigen presenting cells are recognized by the host cytotoxic T cell CD8 and CD4 helper cells. So, the class 1 anti, uh, which is present on antigen presenting cell is recognized by CD8 cytotoxic T cells and class 2 antigen presenting on APC are recognized by CD4 help cells. So basically in direct pathway, the donor antigens, they are recognized by host T cells. CD4 cells, they proliferate and they produce cytokines, interferon gamma, which induce tissue damage by delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction. CD8 T cells, they respond to graft antigen differentiate into CTLs that kill the graft cells by causing endothelitis or by damaging the tubular cells. In the indirect pathway, the graft antigens, they are picked up, processed and displayed by the host APCs. So in indirect pathway, the host antigen presenting cells, they play a role and activate the CD4 T cells which further damage the graft by delayed hypersensitivity reaction and further activate the B lymphocytes to form antibodies through plasma cells leading to endothelitis. So basically in graft rejection, direct pathway and indirect pathway. In direct pathway, the donor antigens, they are recognized by CD8 and CD4 cells that will cause proliferation of CD4 cells that release cytokines and that uh, will activate the macrophages and there is Delay type of hypersensitivity reaction that cause tissue damage. And CD8 cells, they will cause endothelitis. And in indirect pathway, the um, antigens are picked up, processed and displaced by the host APC antigen presenting cells. So in this host antigen presenting cells, they will play a role which will lead to activation of CD4 cells and delay type of hypersensitivity reactions and also production of antibodies leading to blood vessel damage. So rejection of kidney grafts. On the basis of morphology and the underlying mechanism, rejection reactions they are classified as Hyperacute, acute, and chronic. So, first we are 
dealing with hyper acute rejection this form of rejection occurs within minutes or hours after transplantation so it is hyper acute within minute or hours a hyper acutely rejecting kidney it rapidly becomes cyanotic mottled and flaccid and excrete few drops of bloody urine there is deposition of immunoglobulin and complement in the blood vessels causing the endothelial injury and fibrin platelet thrombi formation so uh, the kidney become flaccid mottled and cyanotic within minutes or hours of transplantation and microscopically the neutrophils are the important infiltrate neutrophils they accumulate within the arterioles glomeruli and peritubular capillaries as these changes become diffuse and intense the glomeruli will become thrombotic will undergo thrombotic occlusion of the capillaries and fibrinoid necrosis the kidney cortex then undergo necrosis such non functioning kidneys they have to be removed so in hyper acute rejection it occurs within minutes or hours kidney becomes cyanotic flaccid and there is neutrophilic infiltrate accumulation of neutrophils within the arterioles glomeruli and peritubular capillaries leading to thrombotic occlusion of the capillaries and necrosis acute rejection it occurs within days of transplantation in the untreated recipient or appears suddenly months or even years later after immunosuppression has been used and terminated so either within days of transplantation in untreated recipient or after months or even years later in which the immunosuppression treatment is terminated in any one patient cellular or humoral immune mechanism may predominate so histologically the humoral rejection is associated with vasculitis the cellular rejection is marked by an interstitial mononuclear cell infiltrate so acute rejection is further of two type humoral and cellular acute rejection so the acute cellular rejection most commonly seen within initial months after transplantation and is heralded by clinical and biochemical signs of renal failure so patient is in renal failure within initial months after transplantation histologically there is extensive interstitial mononuclear cell infiltration there is edema and interstitial hemorrhage so lymphocytic infiltration edema and hemorrhage immunohistochemical stains they will reveal cd4 and cd8 t cells which express markers of activated t cells glomerular peritubular capillaries they contain large number of mononuclear cells that will invade the tubules causing the focal tubular necrosis so there is tubular necrosis and endothelitis acute humoral rejection or rejection vasculitis it is mediated by the anti donor antibodies hence it is manifested mainly by damage to the blood vessels in this uh, there is necrotizing vasculitis with endothelial cell necrosis there is neutrophilic infiltration deposition of immunoglobulin complement fibrin and formation of thrombus such lesions are associated with extensive necrosis of the renal parenchyma the deposition of the complement breakdown product c4d in allograft is a strong indicator of humoral rejection so cd4d 
deposition is indicator of acute humoral rejection. So you are seeing micro photographs, the first A photograph it is the morphology of hyper acute rejection of kidney allograft. In this, there is endothelial damage, platelet and thrombi, thrombin, thrombi, thrombus is formed and neutrophilic infiltration in the glomeruli. Acute cellular rejection, there is chronic inflammatory infiltrate and in acute humoral rejection this is the blood vessel with inflammatory cell infiltrate and smooth muscles in the intima chronic rejection in recent years acute rejection has been significantly controlled by immunosuppressive therapy so chronic rejection has emerged as an important cause of graft failure in recent years. In this patient present clinically with progressive renal failure manifested by rise in serum creatinine level over a period of 4 to 6 months. Chronic rejection is dominated by vascular changes, interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy. The vascular changes, they are a dense and obliterative intimal fibrosis. So, vessel is fibrosed and obliterated. The vascular lesions, these vascular lesions will result in renal ischemia that is manifested by glomerular loss, interstitial fibrosis, tubular atrophy and shrinkage of the renal parenchyma. The glomeruli may show scarring with duplication of the basement membranes. This appearance is called chronic transplant glomerulopathy. So, when glomeruli they are scarred and there is duplication of basement membrane. Chronic rejecting kidneys usually have interstitial mononuclear cell infiltrate of plasma cells and numerous eosinophils. So, there is interstitial infiltrate of plasma cells and eosinophils. So, these microphotographs, they are showing changes in chronic rejection. Photograph A, there is tubular atrophy, interstitial fibrosis and arteriosclerosis. In microphotograph 2, the vascular lumina, it is replaced by accumulation of smooth muscles and connective tissue. Thank you.